So this is originally a 10 R, uh, 10 R80 car. Uh, it's a 2018. Um, it is now uh, fitted with an ATI Turbo 400 transmission. Uh, so I do use the JPC uh, Hurst pistol grip shifter mount. And then of course the Hurst shifter. I do have an N2 MB Wilt box mounted in the glove box. Handles all of the, the two-step control for launching, uh, which is this button here on the steering wheel uh, where it says uh, two-step brake. So my trans brake and my two-step operate off of that same button. Uh, so when it's go time, I just have to release the one. And then incidentally on the other side is the parachute button. Uh, we'll talk about that in a later video. I also have a Holly shift light set up uh, to help keep uh, the shift points uh, where I want them. Uh, so it's completely configurable, allows me uh, to get a visual aid on when to rip that shifter backwards. For the reverse circuit, if you add a little switch, micro switch to the top of your Hurst shifter and pull the wiring to the PCM, you're actually able to engage all of your reverse accessories when you put your shifter into reverse, which has been a nice addition. I haven't lost uh, any of my functionality. Uh, backup camera works, reverse sensors, all of that still operates fine. Just one other thing to note inside, I do have a transmission trigger gauge. Um, so this is mounted right in the pan. I'll show you where that is, but that allows me to see uh, good visibility to the transmission temperatures, make sure that the trans cooler is working. Uh, and that everything is in good shape uh, between rounds. Under the hood, things don't look a whole lot different. You can just see the locking dipstick uh, that pokes out there. So that's the uh, uh, turbo four handed transmission. It does have a quick disconnect at the bottom to remove the transmission in case I need to quickly without removing the entire dipstick. Uh, and it is locking to make sure that I meet all NHR spec. So we're under the car now. It's a little tighter under here. Uh, you do need, uh, when you swap the Turbo 400 in, um, if you have an automatic, to switch the mid plate to a 2015 through 2017 um, dust shield here, uh, starter shield. And then you also need to actually change the starter as well. So I have a 2015 starter in here, which is a 3 bolt instead of the 2018 2 bolt. So you have to change the starter and the mid plate. Everything I have is ATI, so I have the ATI flex plate, and what you can't see up in there is the ATI uh, spacer that bolts uh, in between the flex plate itself and the crank to give you proper uh, positioning of the flex plate teeth with the starter. I have an ATI 10 inch six bolt welded um, Outlaw, uh, Outlaw Extreme Converter, um, ATI catch can, transmission itself is their fuel comp uh, build so it does have trans brake um, I did opt for the deep morosa pan with the skid plate it helps me since I work on the ground on jack stands to maneuver the transmission in and out as I need uh, since I don't have a lift uh, I do have their quick disconnect uh, trans cooler line so when I do have to pull the transmission these two connections right here just pop apart it doesn't leak any fluid and allows me to remove the transmission easily and if you remember the dipstick also has a quick release so it drops it very quickly. Just wanted to provide a view of the other side so you can see here the starter the 3 bolt 2015 starter. Uh, your 2018 wiring will go right to it no problem. And then there are the transmission cooler lines, so I had to put swivels on it to make sure that uh, they didn't butt up against the chassis itself and everything fits. If you are planning on a Turbo 400, you will have to do some clearancing. So as you notice here on the uh, footwell of the driver's side, I did have to push that back in a little bit to make room for the shifter uh, linkage and bracket. The transmission rocks just a little bit, so you just want to make sure you have ample room for that to move. A little bit harder to see but on this side you'll also want to do some clearancing on the passenger footwell just up where you can see the transmission pan would potentially make contact up in there so again it might be a little hard to see um, but if you just do a little bit of spacing up there you'll buy the space that you need uh, when you put the transmission in so on the back of the pan is the connection for the temp sensor uh, gauge so that is what feeds the AEM uh, to let me know where the uh, transmission temperature is I do run the JPC transmission cross member and drive shaft loop combo. Uh, so you can see right there is where the drive shaft loop part is. And then of course, where it is holding uh, the transmission itself. 
I do use an energy suspension transmission mount. Uh, seems to keep it pretty tight. And then for, for the draft shaft, I do run a draft shaft shop aluminum three and a half inch drive shaft that you can see tucked up between the exhaust. The transmission is set up with roller bearing. And another shot of that draft shaft loop. For the transmission cooler, I did mention those quick disconnect fittings. Uh, you can see the lines, they do wrap up around the bracket. That's them in um, the heat shield. So it comes back around and then rides the frame rail uh, the rest of the way to the back. The trans cooler lines loop over the rear cradle, tied up. The uh, end line has a temp sensor which kicks on the fan itself. So this is all wired up to a relay that's in uh, the trunk. Uh, and then into the trans cooler itself. Uh, so it's mounted right here to the bottom of the spare tire well. I do have rubber isolators between the fan and the body itself to keep everything happy. And then the output uh, runs back. So might be a little hard to see, uh, but you can see the relay back over there, uh, which runs the transmission fan. Uh, so all of the uh, uh, wiring set aside. And this, of course, feeds power down to uh, the fan itself. So when that uh, temperature sensor sees anything over 180 degrees, it does kick that fan on and pulls the temp down very quickly.